We're going to be looking in this video at how to create in Publisher the file which you will need. So we're going to start off by creating a blank um, document. It doesn't matter if it's portrait or landscape at this point. The first thing we need to do is make sure our page size has been set correctly. As you're doing an academic poster presentation, it will usually need to be in landscape. The reason for this is if we're presenting in person, we usually will be using a video screen or you know the screen at the front of your classroom in order to do your presentation. So landscape is our better option for that. The more important thing for us to do is to set our size. Your assignment brief probably says you need to make an A1 poster. The size doesn't really actually make that much of a difference for us in terms of what we're producing. All the difference is going to be is in terms of a font size we end up using. You will find if you click on size in Publisher in the and that page design area just there, that you will not have A1. I've created that myself. What you will need to do is go to create new page size and then put in the dimensions which you need. So you will need to set it up as being 59.4 centimeters by 84.1. That is the size for a A1 sheet. 9.4 by 84.1 and then we click OK. Let's go into Word just for a moment and then I'm going to put it into landscape because I want it to be in landscape. Okay if we look at examples of academic posters all I've done here is googled academic posters and having a look at a few images. If we scroll through and have a look at the preview on the right hand side. Most of them you can see are separated into smaller boxes of information and the landscape ones tend to use either three or four columns in order to lay out their content. What you will also notice is that they use a lot of graphs, a lot of images to break up the monotony of the text. That's what we need to be thinking about as well. That said, you're probably also going to have a word count which you need to include realistically um, you are not going to get more than 800 to a thousand words onto a poster it is quite tight as it is but if you have a word count you need to meet that is ultimately what you need to do generally speaking though our guidance with academic posters is we put the absolute essentials onto a poster and we say the rest in as part of our presentation so although you may be kind of putting your headlines on there your poster does also need to speak for itself at an academic conference, there will be times when you are standing, presenting your poster to the audience. There will also be times where the poster has to speak for itself and to give an overview of the research which you've been doing. The common things we tend to have on a poster are a title area, which also says who we are. So it will name us, it will say where we're coming from, what our qualification is. So in this case, it might be Joe Bloggs from Coventry University Scarborough. We will also generally have a kind of background or introduction, some kind of orientation, some steps of kind of what was done uh, or some kind of findings, as well as having recommendations which might come out of it, kind of your conclusion almost, and some general information about where you're coming from. If we take a look at our um, kind of, that's what I want to. So we're likely to be thinking about a problem solution format. So we'll be laying out the background of a problem what we're looking at, defining it, giving some possible solutions that might be more than one of our boxes, as well as giving a rationale for the choice of one solution or set of solutions, how we propose to implement it or how we've seen it implemented, depending on what you are writing about, and some evaluation of its effectiveness or potential effectiveness for your target audience. So the target audience for your intervention is likely to be different from the target audience for your poster, and we do need to bear that in mind. Again, take a look at the present presentation to find out a little more about this, as it's not the focus of what we're talking about here. So when we want to lay things out on Publisher, we need to go, first of all, ideally into guides. This will give us some kind of hidden guidelines in order to help us lay out what we want to use. I'm going to use a three by three grid. And I'm going to use that as kind of guide point for where I want my text boxes to go. We're going to be using the insert menu for the rest of this um, kind of building process now. 
So we're out of page design into insert and we're going to be adding some text boxes and we're going to be using the text boxes just there. And you can see it's standards to 10. 10 really is going to be far too small for our needs. I think for 48 is probably going to be for our titles. Possibly even that's the right size for all of our text. We might be able to go down to size 40, but I doubt it's much lower than that. If we need to insert some images, then we can go to pictures if it's saved on our computer. We can also find some online pictures. Bear in mind, if you're producing a piece of work which is going to be presented, we need to be using images which are cleared for you to use in that way. So a general image search is generally speaking going to have some problematic things in it. So I'm going to search for child. And a lot of images that come back potentially are going to be problematic. You can see I've already got Creative Commons only turned on. That will tell me what I need to do in order to use this image, who I need to credit. This is a free image, so it's not saying I need to credit it to someone. Okay. Ideally, we want to find our own images, um, include our own kind of tables and things. We could also insert shapes as well. Um, so we might want to use shapes to kind of give a little bit more definition to what we're doing. We certainly probably want to round our text boxes, make um, some level of design. What you can't see here, let me move that up just slightly. So we have drawing tools and text box tools as well. So in our drawing tools, I'm going to pick a coloured outline and have a white centre. The reason for that is I am going to actually set my page design to have a slightly different background colour. I'm just going to pick a nice pale blue. So that ideally we always want to be writing on a white background that gives the highest contrast for us. So something we really want to avoid is writing over an image. And I wouldn't suggest using an image for the background either because that's slightly problematic. Again, we want to have the highest contrast, make it as easy as possible to read so we can get a decent amount of text on that. I'm also going to include a top area. So I'm again going to go to insert and draw a text box. In this case, I'm going to make it bigger. So this is where our title is going to go. Um, I'm going to pick a size of 120. That sounds about right to me. Uh, it might be a bit large. So that's our title of the poster. I'm going to try making that slightly smaller. So I want to get two lines in here. And I might make that even smaller again. And I'm going to put my name and who I am associated with. I'm also going to change that from M dash to an N dash. That's purely a preference thing because it annoys me when it makes big dashes. And I'm going to again give that a colour background. This time I'm going to slightly further down and I can get that option. I'm trying to pick a fairly limited palette. I'm using this kind of orange colour for the outlines here and for the top here. I'm using black text throughout. I might change that to white see what it looks like, but I think that's going to have a contrast problem. Let's have a quick look. It might be okay, or I might change that back to black because it's kind of somewhere in the middle there. Um, but I'm going to keep adding areas in, trying to use those columns. So I'd probably have my introduction up here. I'm going to move that up. And you can see actually, as I move it, that it will say, yes, that's aligned to the text boxes. It's aligned to the grid lines which we had. So this is going to be my introduction. I don't think I've got enough space to have a blank line there. So I'm going to have to move that up. And what I might do instead is make up my titles a little bit more obvious by making them bold. You can see that there's a certain amount of design work going on as I look at it, as I kind of work out what I'm doing. But generally speaking, I'm using the grid lines to lay out where my boxes are all going to be and to decide what I'm doing. Ideally, I need to have some text written already, but I need to remember to think about every single word I need to use because there's only going to be a certain amount of space and I need to try to make it fit in as best I can. 
A thousand words is quite ambitious to try to fit onto a poster of this size. You might find you have to drop your text down size down slightly. Obviously at the moment we're working in maybe what's one quarter, maybe one third of the screen. If we put it into full screen, hopefully it will be slightly larger for us. I'm going to pause now and I'll add a bit more content in. Okay, so I put a bit more content in. It's changed its focus to slightly as well. A few things I want to kind of demonstrate to you. If you're not happy with the bullet points are kind of like ending up, if you highlight your bullets, you can move them around just slightly and get your size right. If you want some formatting to copy from one place to another, if you look on the home area, you'll find a format painter. If you just highlight the text which you want, and then highlight some new text which you want to move over, then you will find that you can copy that formatting around. That's good for making sure boxes have the same formatting all the way through. In each case, I've used the same size titles, the same size text, and then I've also used the same kind of colouring around the backgrounds and things. One thing I have got, which is kind of frustrating me, is certain words have actually kind of broken across the um, lines. I want to change that. All I'm going to do is press Shift and press Enter. If I don't press Shift, it leaves a bit more of a gap. It's very small here, but I can see it. You can do that as a full setting. However, for the amount of them I've got, I'm just going to do this. If you need to have a full setting, I can show you where it is, um, but it's probably not worth talking about here. The last thing I wanted to kind of demonstrate was I've got a text box I want to flow over a short gap here. If you've got a load of text you want to paste in and have it flowing through bit by bit, then you can use the dots and you can pour it from one box into another. So if I now press enter on there, it's just moved down. You may want that feature if you've kind of written out all your text first and then want to put it into boxes, you may not want to. You'll notice on here I've not got any references. Check with your tutor whether you need to include references on your poster or not. The references can be somewhat smaller. Usually we would have them in the bottom right hand corner. That's usually where they'll go for a academic poster. The final thing we need to do with our academic poster to make sure we can present it properly is to go to file and save as and we're going to want to save it onto our computer somewhere where we know where it is. I'm going to use my desktop. And we're going to want to save it not only as a publisher file, um, and I'm actually going to do that first because I've not done it yet. I'm also going to save it as, again, on my desktop, I'm going to use a PDF file. If we don't submit, save it as a PDF, we will be unable to submit it into Turnitin because it needs to be a PDF in order to submit in Turnitin. For me, it's already opened automatically in my Chrome browser. I'm now going to just make it into full screen, and then I'm going to fiddle with the zoom slightly so I can see all of it. Um, so I can now see my full poster. It is going to go, well, okay, that's good. Okay, so if I stop moving the mouse, it does kind of go across. Although you can't see because it's dropping off slightly at the bottom, I am seeing the full screen. I can read it all quite happily on my laptop. I could probably actually go a couple of font sizes smaller if I needed to. Um, but generally speaking, it's laying out roughly how I wanted it to for now, and I've got around about 500 words on there at the moment. So that's been a very quick introduction into how to create a poster uh, in the academic style using um, Microsoft Publisher. It is just a starting point. These are just suggestions. I've tried to show you a few things I think you might want to know about. Um, go back over the video, have another look if you need to. Uh, if you have any further questions, come back to me. Uh, obviously, I can kind of fill those in either by just writing out a description or again by recording a short thing showing you how to do something. I hope that's been helpful. Please get in touch with us. Uh, academicskills.cus at coventry.ac.uk is the best way to contact us. Thank you very much.